Hey guys, Brett Kelly here. Welcome to another Tuesday Tech Tip at 45 Drives. Um, today we're going to do a user submitted request and I'm going to uh, walk you through how to join a clustered storage solution, whether that be CephFS or Samba, into a Windows Active Directory. So, there's two methods to do this, using WinBind or using a software package called SSSD. Uh, I'm going to talk about WinBind in this case, and uh, why don't you come join me at my desk and I'll uh, screen record the rest of this process. So before I dive into everything, I'm just going to give you a little diagram uh, overview, uh, just kind of talk through what we're going to do. Then I'm going to pull up some uh, terminals, um, configure the files in one location, copy them over to the other location, start our services, show that we've joined the domain. So. Uh, just so you understand what I'm looking at here. So I have an existing CephFS cluster built already. Uh, it's running a couple other services besides CephFS, but I have CephFS already configured. Um, next, you can see the two Samba gateways here. They're going to mount the file system. They are the ones who are going to join uh, into the Active Directory, enumerate all the users so we can have proper uh, uh, authentication into our share. And um, so Samba 1 and Samba 2 are the two... Uh, um, uh, machines I'll be working off of and I'll be joining into uh, our Active Directory that I have running. So the general flow of how this video is going to go and wh what you kind of need to do to join a uh, multiple um, Samba gateways to an Active Directory is as follows. You have to install all your dependencies. So I've already got those installed um, but we'll, I'll give you a list of those in the description. Two, you need a shared file system. So CephFS, that's what we're using, that's already con uh, configured. Um, three, CTDB um, configured. CTDB is what manages the multiple Samba and Winbind services, servers, uh, hosts a virtual IP that uh, the end users connect to, fails over all that fun stuff. CTDB isn't critical into joining the Active Directory here, but since we have a cluster of them, it's an, importable, it's an important part. All you really need to know is CTDB is the... Um, management service that starts and stops um, Samba and Winbind when failovers occur, as well as host the VIP and multiple other things, but generally that's what it's doing. Four, uh, and the real kind of magic here is we're going to configure the Samba config file. And this is where we're going to define shares, permissions, the AD join info. So I'm really going to focus on talking about the AD info, defining all the massive multitude um, of options that Samba offers is, is a series of videos in itself, but uh, so I'm going to focus on the AD join stuff. Um, we have to configure Kerberos and the NS switch co file configuration. That's relatively simple, uh, kind of. Um, uh, we can breeze through that. Six will actually join the domain, and then once we're joining the domain, we'll test our join, make sure everyone's there, uh, make sure we can see our users and groups uh, from our domain in our um, individual. Uh, each individual uh, uh, Samba gateways um, and we will assign permissions to the shared file system, uh, the shares underneath. So that's how this video will flow. Um, if I have to draw or anything I'll pop up this dry IO uh, screen and uh, but that should be the the overview. So let me pop open to my VMs that one and that one so I'm going to work off, so I've got VSMB1 and VSMB2, so I've got a little virtualized cluster here, uh, great for uh, development. So um, so first you'd have to install your dependencies, so I'm just going to, there's more than just this, but what you do is you uninstall CTB Samba, let it get all its extras, but um, I don't want to update yet, I want to continue using the version I'm on. Um, so... Again, yep, yeah, check the list below for the dependencies. Again, I'm on CentOS 7, uh, 7.6. Um, shared file system. I don't have any mounted, but I do have it set up. So let me do mount FS, no, sorry, FS gateway and the CTDB lock file. So if we look at what's mounted, here's my, my shared file system. So we have our dependencies, we have a shared file system, we need CTDB uh, to manage multiple Samba and Winbind servers. So I'm not gonna go into the details of that, but the magic in CTDB is you need to define some public addresses and you need to define the nodes that you're uh, managing. So what CTDB will do, 
Um, these are the two IPs of VSMB1 and VSMB2. And then these are the two floating um, VIPs that I've chosen uh, that the end users will connect to the, uh, the share with. Um, you can do all kinds of fun stuff, put this into a load balancer or uh, a round robin DNS and achieve some sort of pseudo load balancing that way as well. Um, but again, not really here about CTDB. So CTDB will be set up, so we'll go into Samba now. So the magic of Samba is, let me clear my screen. So I'll go Vim, Etsy, Samba, Samba Comp. So I got a lot of options here, and I'm not gonna pour through all of them, but I'll touch on the ones that are important to joining the domain. So clustering equals yes. Whenever you're using, Samba, uh, whenever you're using CTDB with Samba, you have to have this option. What it does is it makes sure that it keeps the um, um, the password database uh, in a shared location so everyone can locate it. If not, it'll be local on each machine. Um, dead time DNS proxy, not going into that. So the ID map configs are very, very important to joining an AD. And this is kind of the magic of how it maps a Windows SID, which is what uh, Windows gives the number that, uh, that uh, identifies their users, and how we map that to a UID of what Linux uses to map their users. So um, as you can imagine, in a clustered scenario, you'd want to guarantee that the map from SID to UID, or I guess really what I want to say is that the UID, the, the number that represents that user on the Linux box that's doing the Sama sharing is identical on each one. Because you can imagine if it wasn't, if you had permissions set up and everything was working great, and then failover scenario happens, okay, great, CTDB fails over, Samba fails over, but now you can't access your share because user 10,000 used to be John is now Joe. So it's imperative that the map from SS or sorry SID the Windows uh, ID number for the user gets mapped the same way on every Linux server. So the way we do that is with the backend RID. So there's a couple options here. And you can go check those out in samba.conf uh, man page if you want. But really, our ID is great because it is an algorithmically, um, it determines algorithmically based on the SID how to calculate the UID. Therefore, no matter which server you run it on, it'll always apply the same algorithm to the same SID. Therefore, you get the same output. So it's imperative that when you're using um, AD in a clustered environment that you use a backend like our ID. There are a couple others that solve the problem as well but th this is the this this one's really easy to set up and um, gets the job done exactly as you need it to um, this other end here so um, the other ID map config where we're using t trivial database 2 that's just for local users that's kind of the default you leave that there um, and you notice we have star which is pretty much a catch-all for any other domain that's not my domain 45 lab so you can notice that the range of IDs here um, from 100,000 to just shy, one shy of 300,000, that's what it would map um, something outside of the 45 lab domain to. And then anyone in the 45 lab domain will, will give the output such that it falls in, but the output, the UID will be calculated such that it's in, the, in between those two numbers. Um, one thing to note is if you have a really, 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 really big AD, uh, make this range big enough to account for everyone. I've seen in the past where when it seems like an active don't it joined but you don't quite get all the users you made your range too small so it wasn't able to enumerate every user. Anyway that was a bit more than I wanted to say about that but this is one of the most important ways to do it and make sure that you use the RID backend when doing it. Um, log level, I've got that jacked up because I was doing some testing of other things later. Typically, you just leave that out. Default is fine. Um, NetBIOS name, that is the, since this is a cluster, um, and it's got a floating VIP, it's not, you don't want to address it by the individual members in the cluster. You want it to have one big unified name. So that's what the NetBIOS name is here, SMB cluster. As far as your AD is concerned, that's what this share is called. It'll be called SMB cluster. Um, mm -hmm. uh, private dir that's where the um, remember I said earlier with clustering uh, it's important that you keep this on shared location private dir uh, the, that's where they keep it mount ffs ctdb 
Um, the realm I'm joining is 45lab.com. That's our AD. Uh, security. Um, security is either domain, ADS, or user. Domain is when your Sama server is actually acting as a domain server. We are not doing that. Um, it's user when it's just standalone mode. We are not doing that. So we're using ADS. Um, server role, don't necessarily have to put that string there. Um, same with server string, that's not um, just kind of optional. Uh, strict locking, I have that in there for testing. That's the most, not most important right now. Um, and yes, and the other two big ones to look at here are or four, sorry, when bind enumerate groups, when bind enumerate users, both are set to yes. If you leave those at no, which I believe the default is, it will join the domain. You can query the users and stuff, but you cannot enumerate them. Um, it's nice to um, it's nice to have them enumerated because then you can see them, you can use them, you can. Uh, that's all great. Uh, however, if you have a humongous domain, it can kind of slow things down a little bit. So sometimes there's a use case when you don't want to enumerate them, but in this case, uh, we are going to. Um, use default domain for WinBind. That's kind of semantics on if you uh, have multiple domains or it, it's whether or not you have to put the domain slash in front of your username is really what that says. Since I'm using default main as yes, I can just uh, use the actual name. I don't have to append uh, 45 lab slash to every username to use it. And then work group is the, I forget the technical term exactly what this is, but it's the first half of the realm there. Um, these options down here aren't really huge for, uh, they're not needed to join a domain, but to use Windows ACLs on top of CephFS or any Linux, um, Linux file system, uh, you need these options enabled, and that way you can have full control over the Windows permissions on the Windows side of things, which is great. Um, so, yeah, that was, that's, that's the main files, th this is the main config options you need to put in samba.conf, smb.conf to uh, join the domain. You need to tell it how you want to enumerate your users, how algorithmically to do that. You need to tell it it's clustering. You need to tell it what its name is. You need to tell it that it's in active directory mode, ADS security. Um, you need to tell it to enumerate the groups and users. And you need to tell it which work group you're in as well and which realm you are in. That way when we run the net join com command, it'll read this and it'll know who to contact. Um, I'll come back to the share part later. Uh, it's not the last time we'll see that file. Um, another very important thing to note is your main DNS server of all nodes joining the Active Directory must resolve um, the DNS server of the actual AD itself. So that I guess what I'm saying is um, the primary DNS entry has to be the domain you're joining or else it'll have issues finding it and it'll fail to join. Um, I'm not hoping over to the, hopping over to the second server because it's already done there. Um, so I'll hop back after we've joined the domain and we've seen that the permissions are, um, are assigned. I will define the shares and permissions after. So we'll, we'll go back to four in a minute. So. Now we're going to do the Kerberos, Kerberos and NS switch files. So I'll start with Kerberos, Kerberos 5. There's a lot of magic you can do here, but the bare minimums work fine. Um, so logging by default, this will be here. Uh, just leave it be. The lib defaults, uh, the defaults here are fine. Anywhere where I'm going to just, I'm just going to highlight the uh, stuff that you have to uh, change for your environment. So the default realm, you have to set that. So I'm in 45lab.com. Um, and domain realms, I, I had to ha put these two entries in as well. Um, again, this is the bare minimum of your Kerberos.conf setup. Um, you can get much more ingrained, but this will get the job done. Okay, let's see. So next, I'm going to go in as switch.conf. So uh, what you want to what you want to do here is set password and group to compat and winbind. So just make it look just like this file, and you do this on every node. So to do that, we do have to start CTDB has to be running. So we're just going to start it, even if it's not healthy or it can't, whatever. It just the CTDB 
Daemon must be running before we do our join, and since this is clustered, we should only have to join one of them, and then it will join everything. Sorry, join one of the nodes, and then all the nodes will be joined. Um, we don't have to do this on each uh, on each server. So we're going to go net ads join dash u bk is my admin user and password and we're in. So it's not going to do an automatic DNS update. Don't be worried. It's very normal. Um, so we're joined there. So I can go with net ads test join. Join is okay. So let's go over to this guy. And we're also joined here. So this is what I was saying. Since it's clustered, it, it was able to bring both of them in. So as far as we're concerned, 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 <laughs> um, we've just joined the domain. So since in my uh, test parm, sorry, I should have mentioned this back when we were going through Samba. If you run the command test parm, it'll uh, spit out this, uh, your, your SMB conf as Samba interprets it. So you can use it to double check if you've got anything wrong. Um, so I'm just going to run test prime here and just to show you the options we have set. Uh, and yeah, so see we've enumerated winbind. Uh, um, we should be able to go get ent groups. No, it's group. There we go. And you can see the, nu the numbering scheme starts at 10,000, just as we put with the RED thing. And there's a big gap from the local users. So these are all our local groups. So here's my groups, and let's look at beautiful. So if I went ID um, BK, it'll spit back all my information like that. Or if I go ID Seth, which is a local user, there's all this local stuff. So it's at this stage now. We can go back samba.conf and set your permissions accordingly. So on this WinShare I have, I have the directory that I'm going to share out configured such that all the um, permissions can be set window side. So you notice how I don't explicitly give any permission to any user or group to do what it needs to do. I made it browsable, read only, no. And then what I have, I have set the owner of this public to be domain admins, and then everything under that can just be configured from your window side. So now on the same thing, I'm sharing out a different path to, to uh, our Mac environment, and where I don't want to go through all that, I explicitly put um, users, groups, all that fun stuff. So uh, that's how you uh, join a clustered Samba um, a clustered Samba setup into an Active Directory. The fun parts are you do not have to join your cluster. You just have to join the gateways. So that's great. And um, it's, uh, it's not, too, uh, not too much to figure out. Um, yeah, and the last thing I want to note here is, so this would be kind of like the manual way to do this. Um, as you can imagine, as you get multiple nodes, this can get annoying. Or even just remembering to get the config files correct. Um, um, you're open to mistakes. So this is where Ansible comes in. So we, um, on, our, on our 45 drive GitHub, um, we have our own fork of this F Ansible um, playbooks. And we, uh, we added one specifically for this Sama stuff. So the idea here is um, you don't necessarily have to do all these by hand. So typically in the field, what we'll do is we'll use the Ansible uh, setup, but it's great to know how to do it underneath in case you ever have to troubleshoot or, or, or help someone out. So. All right, so we're all joined in and all our users have their correct permissions and everything. I hope that answered your question. Um, I know there's a lot of information to fit into a tech tip, so uh, we're going to put the raw output of, uh, of that process on our YouTube page. And as always, if you have any questions, requests, anything at all, uh, leave us a comment below, email us at info45drives or any of our social media channels. Uh, we'll plug those somewhere. And uh, thanks for watching.